The Street Machine Nationals is a show that attracts a certain type of car, namely a pro street car. And pro street is its own type of style. It's very cool. Uh, a pro street car, kind of by definition, has big tires in the back, skinny tires in the front, a lot of power, oftentimes big blower coming through the hood or some kind of wild induction. And usually they're capped off with some kind of wild graphic. And pro street evolved from Let's say the early mid 70s, it kind of peaked in the 80s. And a lot of these cars that are here today were actually built back then. And today they're brought back for this Legends of Pro Street display. It's really cool because if you read any of the car magazines through that time period, you've seen these cars. You've seen that pink Thunderbird. You've seen the blue Malibu. You've seen a lot of these different cars. It's amazing to me that they still exist and that they still look as good as they do. And this is one of the few shows you can come to to see a massive Pro Street display. There's a few cars that stand out in your mind from a magazine or seeing them at a show. And this Camaro is definitely one of them for me. Gary, how long have you had this car? been completed since 1993 for our first year down here. And I'm going to say CarCraft featured it in September, October, 93, something like uh, that? Yep, yeah, it was early uh, 20, uh, 1994. Early, early 94? 94, yeah. I remember vividly the spread in the magazine because I had it stuck to my bedroom wall. Yeah, they did a great shot. It was shot in a building right over here, just about far from where we're at now. Yeah. So, so uh, back then, I mean, you've got things done to this car that are innovative today, done 20 some years ago. When we started building this car, we just uh, went after it in our own little way in a little garage, and we just locked ourselves in the garage, and we said, "That's what, what can we do? It's different, you know. Well, let's make a hood on power window motors, and uh, let's uh, make a smooth headliner, and let's do things like that." So it was uh, basically a lot of street rod involvement from back in the day that we incorporated into this car. How'd you, in, how'd you build the nose? The nose is based off a stock '71 split bumper Camaro. And the original ones had a polyurethane piece of bolted on. And to get the smooth look, we made one out of sheet metal and we welded it on and body worked it in. And there's uh, all kinds of smoothing done all over this car. Uh, every seam has been filled, smoothed out. All the vents in the hood are now gone. Uh, there's a bite line used to be at the bottom of the door. We worked all that out. Uh, everything you can smooth or fill, we smooth or filled it. That was, well, it was hot in 93 and 94. Well, and again, it still looks good now. Well, thank you. Now, how original is this car to the 93 build? It is identical. So has it been repainted, refreshed at all? The car's a driver. It's probably got 50,000 miles on it. It's on its third or fourth paint job. Wow. Three overalls and one touch-up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's still the same color and everything. Yeah, exactly. Bahama blue. Yeah, from yeah. a 90, 92 Chevy truck, I believe, actually. Yes, yeah, I remember well. Yeah. Well, another thing that's cool is the, the, the silly little details like tell me about the wrench on the floor well when we did the car a lot of graphics and stuff was real popular and we couldn't decide what we wanted we just tossed it around night after night in the garage building the car and it's like well with a sheet metal interior what would you least likely to expect to see in the car a tool laying in the floorboard so we airbrushed our wrench in the floor and it's funny how many people try to pick that up <laughs> and uh, tell us what's powering this it's a basically stock uh, tune port motor out of an IROC Z28 Camaro. Still running strong. Still running strong. It's got the SLP runners on it, computer chip, just basically stock. It's built to drive. And, you know, we never trailered them back in the day. You know, you hop in them and you drive them. So that's what we basically built this for. So Thanks for bringing it on, for, for well, building it and keeping it alive. Well, absolutely. Thank you. You got it, buddy. Thanks a lot. Thank you. One of the attributes of a true pro street car is mind-bending visual appeal. And I'm here with Tony, who brought out a 61 Plymouth? Yes, Belvedere. This thing's insane. Thank you. Tell me, uh, what was the mission with this car? I just wanted to build something that you haven't seen done to death. <laughs> yeah, well, you definitely nailed it. Yeah. Uh, so 61 Belvedere, how much of the body is actually right. stock 61? Um, all of it is stock. We've smoothed out a couple of the uh, seams and whatnot and shaved the door handles, but for the most part, it's, it's as Plymouth made it. It's cool that you were able to start with a car that was wild to begin with. Yeah, one of the ugliest cars on earth, yeah. but we made it all right. <laughs> yeah. And you obviously did a lot of chassis work, motor work. What's underneath this thing? Yeah, uh, it's a uh, Art Morrison air ride frame. Uh, the back half, we had backed half the car in the mid 90s. And then the front half is Art Morrison 2x4 air ride front stub on it as well. And uh, it looks like we've got a pair of giant turbos and a cross ram 
a yeah. kind of original style Chrysler intake? Yeah, yeah, the, the intakes would have been original. You could purchase them on these cars new, and I just thought if we're going to do something wild looking, it's the coolest intake on earth. Why wouldn't you barf a couple turbos through it as well? Yeah, and that's what's so neat about doing cars that are different because not only did the exterior of the car look insane, this car when it was new, you opened the hood and it was halfway this crazy. Yeah, you could order that for sure. So what's the rest of the engine? Uh, it's a 440 with the 415 crank, so it's 496. Nice. Pretty, pretty tame, runs on pump gas. Um, turbos are 64 millimeters. Yeah. Um, pretty, pretty tame, small camshaft in it. Um, runs cool. It makes about 700 horse. Might. Oh, I bet easily all day long. <laughs> yeah. So you're barely boosting this thing then? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Built for longevity. And yes. And uh, what about the uh, transmission rear end? The tranny is a 727 torque flight, um, grinder, brake, and a PTC converter. Um, the rear end's a Ford 9 inch. They work. Yep. And I don't need to be brand loyal about that. But, sure, sure. You know. And uh, the color combination is just intense. What color are we looking at? It is uh, 2010 Viper snakeskin green, and the top is uh, a PT Cruiser pastel yellow that we did a mid coat with a um, bunch of green pearl and flake in it as well. Staying all within the Mopar family. And and a, a kind of a factory paint. Sure, and it's not a custom mix. Right. So you could fix it if it gets chipped. Absolutely. The uh, bright work and the trim look fantastic. Um, when you own a 61 Plymouth, you gather parts and pieces for a lot of years. And you spend a lot of money with a plater. Uh, yes, you do. <laughs> well, you can tell your plater, they did a nice job. Thank you. Uh, take me through the interior. Uh, the interior, our uh, buddy of mine, he did the door panels to mimic a stock, the stock door panels that I brought him. And the seats are teased seats that he reupholstered because um, I had these seats in this car years ago. Yeah. So you've had this car for a long time? I've had it since 94. 94, right. Yeah. On. And what do you do with it? Drive it. Drive it. Make friends. There you go. Well, we appreciate it. It's a pleasure meeting you. Awesome car. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for bringing it out. Thanks. Yep.